Charles has now been given a two month suspension for his independent school teaching certificate. Rescue crews say it took longer than necessary, but the Richmond couple has been brought to safety after sending a cold night loss on Mount Seymour. Mel Fury reports. The search for the couple took to the air at first light, and in less than an hour, there was phone contact. The couple was told to stay put. Rescuers were en route. But the pair didn't hear that or misunderstood and started walking away from help. What should have taken two hours took six, and volunteer resources from the North Shore Lions Bank equipment and likely a hefty helicopter bill. The husband and wife were on a hike to celebrate her birthday. Other than the clothes they were wearing, they had with them only a couple of sandwiches, some water, and a garbage bag to sit on. The temperature last night dropped to six degrees. The two were fine back in the parking lot, laughing, not eager to share their experience, and simply drove away. Bell Fury, CBC News, North Vancouver. An elderly man is dead, and BC's police watchdog has been called in after an incident at a Fraser Valley care home. Dan Burke has more. Sounds creep the faces of people who live here in Sheehan Village in Agassiz after hearing a fellow resident died, but it was during some kind of struggle with police. Not to say officers were called just after 6 a.m. for a man reportedly holding what was believed to be a knife near his stomach. Now they say he was subdued and taken into custody. He appeared to have self-inflicted wounds, so paramedics were called. But the man died in the ambulance. The Independent Investigations Office is now in charge. She and village directors and staff say it was a staff member who called 911 when the man appeared to be in distress. They emphasize no staff members were hurt. They add the gentleman who was older had lived in an independence wing of the building and hadn't been there long. And for CBC News, I can see. And members of the BC wine industry are upset about a delay in bringing local wines into grocery stores. Back in April, the provincial government announced major changes to provincial liquor laws. One key change was to allow wine sales in stores. But to date, there are just two stores where that's happening, and they're both in Surrey. Miles Prodan is the president and CEO of the BC Wine Institute. He insists city approvals and private liquor store lobbyists are causing the delay. There's no harm in this. This is all about consumer convenience. There's not going to be one over the corner. We're talking probably the most 45 licenses that are going to be available to move into grocery. So it's going to be selective. It's going to be. It's going to make sense. And it's about convenience. That's Miles Prodan with the BC Wine Institute. And that's the CBC News from Vancouver. For news anytime, go to our website at cbc.ca slash bc or use the CBC News app. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Good afternoon. I'm Stephen Quinn. This is On the Coast on CBC Radio.